<laughs> Why didn't you come inside? This is no place to wait for me. Your dressing room's too crowded, Cecilia. Besides, I get a little lost when your opera friends start talking shop. I don't know an obligata from a hole in the ground. All the opera I know is by ear. Ah, but what a beautiful ears you have. You were great tonight, Cecilia. The greatest Carmen I've ever seen. And I've seen plenty. I'm a delighted you like me. Of all of the people in the audience tonight, I... I wanted the most for you to like me. Where are we going, Scotty? Oh, just around for a couple of drinks. If it gets noisy, we'll go back to my club. Why do your wife be jealous? My wife's always jealous. That's the trouble with marrying a peasant. They're too devoted to you. Oh, turn around. Hmm? Just turn around for a second. I got a surprise for you. Okay, you can look back now for your performance tonight. Gordy, I can't take it. Why not? That's more where that came from. But I can't take it. You were giving me so much already, I had to be embarrassed. Okay, then be embarrassed. And wear it for me, huh? And wear it on the stage. And if anybody asks who gave it to you, just say you got it from a gentleman. The so-called gentleman in the story I'm going to tell you about now, in my role as chief of the Intelligence Division, Internal Revenue Service, is a man this department will long remember. Like a number of underworld graduates who have given up guns and rackets for less dangerous but equally profitable occupations, Scotty Barrow owned a popular and well-known supper club, which yielded a very comfortable living. But Scotty Barrow lived more than comfortably. And before your Treasury Department finished settling his income tax account, Barrow had led our agents to an even larger account, which, like his own, had an enormous balance due to the United States government. This is Treasury File 7169, Internal Revenue Service. The case of the perfect gentleman. Where? That's all I want to know. Where you been? I told you. Out. Till 3 o'clock in the morning? This ain't your night to close up the club. What took you so long to get home? What you been doing? Feeding pigeons? Now look, Mo. Oh, don't look me, Scotty. I know where you've been, all right. Been out with that real editor dame again from the opera company. The one who sings E flat above high C. Or is it below? I don't know. Honest, I don't get you anymore. I could understand it if you fell for some cute chick from a chorus line. You take her out a couple of times and get rid of her. But an opera singer, what's this with you? Where do you get off playing around with opera people? Artists and guys who write books. You trying to be long hair or something? You wouldn't understand. Well, who would? Where you've been heading these last four years, I don't know you anymore. Art collections, $12 books, long playing records. And every time I want to go bowling or something, you got tickets for a concert. It wouldn't hurt you to go to a concert once in a while. I read a book either. It might learn you to speak English. Well, look who's talking. The biggest bum on the south side. You never even got through fourth grade. When we was married, I had to read the license to you. All you knew was pinball machine. All right, all right. I know what I was like. Well, what you putting on this phony act for then, huh? Making like you was a gentleman, using big words, wearing all these dress clothes, and making out like you was a phantom of the opera. Now, you shut up, will you? It's been so long since I smacked you in the kisser, you forget I can still do it. Well, that's more like it. That's like old times. Look, Mona, I'm not interested in old times. If you want to stick in the same place you started out, that's up to you. But I want something better. I want to be up with the cream. I want to mix with them, act like them, and talk like them. Forget about all the shady things I used to do. Well, then why are you still doing them? If you're so honest all of a sudden, why don't you tell the government what you're making? Why don't you pay them what you owe them? You shut up about oh, that! Oh, sure, I'm supposed to shut up about everything. Opera stars, staying out every night, old man Houston, everything. Only one of these days, I'm going to start talking a blue streak, and nobody's going to stop me. No? Well, don't be so sure. Initial leads on income tax cases often come to us in curious ways. And the lead which actually started our investigation of this case came from a courtroom in Miami, Florida, where, during the course of a lawsuit, the name Scotty Barrow was mentioned as the financial backer of several theatrical ventures. Since Barrow's name was familiar to Special Agent Jennings of our Intelligence Division, Jennings, who was covering the trial for another purpose, made mental note of the information and subsequently checked into Scotty Barrow's tax returns. 
the returns showed no record of any theatrical investments whatsoever. With my approval, Jennings then began a preliminary investigation of Mr. Barrow's financial affairs. And within two weeks, he returned to my office with his first report. And from what I've been able to learn so far, Barrow has invested considerable sums of money in Broadway productions, road shows, music festivals, and similar ventures. But he's never reported any income from these sources in his income returns. These investments were made with his own money? I have no proof of that. Of course, it's entirely possible he obtained the money from an outside source. But even if he did, the chances are he received a commission for his services, or at least a share of the profits. Hmm. What about his standard of living, Jennings? Does Barrow appear to be spending a good deal more than he makes from that nightclub of his? No, sir, not particularly. He lives very comfortably, of course, but on his earnings, he can afford it. Last year, he reported an income of $58,000 from that nightclub. You say that as if you thought he'd made considerably more. Not from the nightclub, Chief. I think he runs that operation on a strictly legitimate basis. And the others? Now, that's what I intend to find out. What they are, exactly how much he's made from them, and why he's never shown them on his tax returns. All right, Jennings, go to it. If Mr. Barrow has that kind of money at his disposal, we want to know where he gets it. In an effort to learn more about Scotty Barrow's business affairs and the financial interests he might be representing, Special Agent Jennings spent a good deal of his time observing Barrow and the company he kept. Company which, at this particular time, was chiefly confined to an opera singer named Cecilia Gioroso. Well, why not? Other opera singers have worked in nightclubs. Why can't you? Because I'm going back to Italy. I've already booked passage. Well, you'll just have to cancel it. I've got you booked right here at the club for a four weeks engagement beginning next Monday night. Contract's all made out and ready for you to sign. Scotty, don't be absurd. What's absurd about giving this place a little tone? You draw the kind of people I'd like to see around here. Real class. And if I don't make any money, that's okay with me, too. I, I just want to have you around. That's why I'm leaving, darling. I don't want to be around. These last few months, we've, we've gotten much too close to each other for our own good. What's wrong with being close? Don't you understand what it means to me to be with somebody like you? Somebody with taste and charm and a feeling for all the nice things in the world. There's so much else, Celia, and I've been through all of it. Dirty deals, rackets, street fights. All my life, I've been two steps away from a prison cell. And now? And now I want to wash away all that dirt. I want to learn how to paint, play the piano, appreciate good music, good books. That's why I need you here, to show me the way. You're a very strange man, Scotty. If I had any sense, I'd be afraid of you. And yet I'm not. And you'll stay on for a while? You'll work here for me at the club, huh? No, Scotty. I'm going back home. Now say goodbye to me. Just like that, huh? Just like that. Goodbye, Scotty. Celia. Celia, wait a minute. Celia. Oh, Mr. Barrow, you want it on the phone. Later, later. It's Mr. Houston, Mr. Barrow. Mr. Houston? He's on the phone now? Yeah. Did you tell him I was here? Yes, sir. All right, all right, I'll talk to him. Now, what are you doing here? I told you a hundred times I didn't want you hanging around the office. Now get out of here. I gotta talk to Houston. No, you don't. He isn't on the phone. What? I just told that to the waiter to get you away from that dame. I got sick and tired of seeing you with her. You got a nerve pulling a stunt like that? Oh, what about you? Sitting at the table with her, holding her hands, making a fuss over her, and right out in the open. I ought to throw something at you. Now, you listen to me, Mona. I'm getting fed up with all this fighting and arguing all the time. You keep that up and I'll walk right out on you. I'll get a divorce. Oh, yeah? You wouldn't dare. You pull anything like that, I'll tell the whole courtroom just how much money you got and where you got it. Don't talk like that. Well, don't you talk either. If you want to, go on acting like a gentleman. Only I'm not going to be any lady. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Houston. I was just talking about you. Yeah? We were just talking about you, too. You'd better come over and have a drink with me. Well, what's wrong? Nothing. You just better come over. All right, give me time to get my car. I'll be right there. I didn't say I was worried, Scotty. 
Just repeating some of the stuff Mitch told me. He says there are a couple of treasury boys snooping around New York these days, trying to find the backers of a couple of shows you put us in last year, year before. What are you talking about? You've got a right to invest in shows, haven't you? Your money's as good as anybody else's. My money's a very personal matter, Scotty. I don't like nobody to know where it goes or how much I got. That's why I hired you. You invest the dough so nobody could trace it back to where it came from. There's not much chance of that, Mr. Houston. The money I invested for you is well covered. And how come there's all the snooping around? How come they're asking so many questions about you? Me? Yeah, that's what I heard, Scotty. Have you been having any trouble with the income tax guys? Not that I know of. You better stay out of trouble, Scotty. That dough we got invested in show business is just chicken feed. They start checking into some of the other stuff we're in. May not be so nice. Well, I don't see how they can't check up, Mr. Houston, but just to be on the safe side, might be a good idea to transfer some more of our funds to Europe. I'm sure there's some valuable properties in southern France or Italy that we could pick up for a good price. What are you planning on going over there? Well, I hadn't planned on going at all, Mitch. But now that you mention it, why, going to Italy might be a very good idea. Yes, that's right, Chief. He's making plans to go to Italy a week from tomorrow. No, by plane. And for the past week, he's been making calls on an old acquaintance of yours from Prohibition days, Jim Houston. I see. Have you any idea how Houston fits into this picture? All right, Jennings. Keep watching Barrow. And if the trail gets real hot, you may have to go to Italy with him. Why? Why do you have to go to Europe, too? Who asked you to come along? Nobody asked me. That's why I had to invite myself. You think I'm gonna let you spend six weeks in Milan with that two-bit soprano? You got another guest coming. If I don't do anything else, I'm gonna see to it you don't have any fun. I'm not going for fun. I told you I got business to attend to. I know all about it. If you don't believe me, ask Houston. He'll tell you why I'm going over there. He's sending me. Yeah. Well, I'm making sure you're coming back. And these are the properties that Barrow and Houston have sold in New York and Illinois recently, Jennings? Yes, sir. Well, they were listed under dummy names, of course, but I don't believe we'll have any trouble proving the signatures. Barrow's handwriting is unmistakable. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a great help to us when we start establishing his net worth. Were you able to get anything on how long he intends to stay in Europe? About five or six weeks from what I've been able to pick up. And it seems that the purpose of the trip is to make some investments abroad. That's why they've been liquidating these American holdings. But we still don't know exactly what part of this money is actually Barrow's money. No, sir. Stevens and Hollingsworth are handling that part of the investigation. I've been concentrating on turning up new leads. All right, Jennings. You keep on watching Barrow. That's the most profitable course you can take. Well, he's leaving for Rome tomorrow, sir. Yes, I know. And so are you. The trip to Rome aboard the same plane with Mr. and Mrs. Scotty Barrow was uneventful. But soon after their arrival, Barrow went right to work contacting the vice presidents of two commercial banks, several real estate brokers, and the treasurer of a construction company which was financially interested in several office buildings and an apartment development. With the aid of our treasury agents abroad, Special Agent Jennings was able to investigate the ownership of these properties, and without revealing the purpose of his mission to Barrow and his Italian associates, succeeded in preparing an itemized account of Barrow's and Houston's investments. The total amount was just under three million dollars. Appointments. Got another one of them four-hour appointments this afternoon. That's what I said, didn't I? And I got still another one for tonight. Well, that's nice. We've been here almost two weeks and you haven't taken me out once. Well, I offered to take you, didn't I? But you don't want to go any place but nightclubs and bars. Here we are in a city that's thousands of years old with all kinds of interesting things to see. And all you want to do is have drinks with somebody you can meet in St. Louis. So what? I didn't come here to see the sights. I don't know why you came here at all. If you think you can keep me from meeting Celia, you might as well give up right now. She'll be in town the end of this week. From then on, you won't see me at all. No? What do you figure on doing? Give me a little poison and dropping my body in the river? Uh, I don't have to do all that to get rid of you. All I have to do is take a little trip up to southern France and lose you on the way. You wouldn't dare. Wouldn't I? How long do you think I'm going to go on like this? Pulling you around wherever I go. Putting up with your loud talk and your cheap manners. 
I'm ashamed to be seen with you. You're ashamed, you, the pride of River Street. Well, when we was first married, I had to beg you to take a bath. Now you act like you think you're a duke or something. Well, why don't you let me go? What are you hanging on to me for? You know I'm gonna drop you sooner or later. I'd rather drop dead than to be stuck with you for the rest of my life. <laughs> go ahead. I dare you. Go ahead, Mr. Gentleman. Hopper, to get me long distance. Yeah, I want to talk to the United States. Give me Chicago. Mr. Jim Houston, person to person. Yeah. Rome, Italy? Yeah, sure, I'll talk. Barrow? No, his wife. Hello, baby, what's on your mind? Something wrong? What? What do you mean he's trying to double cross us? Well, it's on account of that dame, the opera singer. Yeah, he's planted to sell everything and run away with her. Well, of course he's got your money. That's why I'm calling you. You gotta stop him. Okay. I'll wait till I hear from you. Yeah, it's bad. It's bad. Looks to me like Barrow's trying to commit suicide. You ever been to Rome, Mitch? Not yet. Well, get your reservations. You're taking the first plane out. And after I get a divorce, we can get married and build a home in southern France. I got enough money right here to live on for at least five years, and by that time, I could be set up in business. I'm afraid it wouldn't work, Scotty. You don't really want to marry somebody like me. No, you think I'm asking you just for the fun of it? I think you're asking me because I, I represent something in your mind, a, a kind of a symbol of, of culture and breeding and refinement. Only it's not true. What's not true? What do you think I am? I have no breeding, Scotty. My father was a shepherd in Fort Tana. Till I was 12 years old, I lived in a one-room house with four brothers, two sisters, and a family of goats. Are you kidding, huh? No, I'm not, Scotty. I never had any formal schooling. And if the parish priest hadn't discovered I had a voice, I, I might still be living in Fort Anna with my brothers and the goats. Perhaps that's why I've always been so fond of you. In so many ways, we're, we're exactly alike. You mean you've been lying to me all this time? Making me think you came from a family of... Well, I don't know what you made me think. All I know is you, you treated me like a sucker. Taking me for all kinds of expensive presents and flowers and... all kinds of favors. No, Scotty, I'm not taking you for anything. I've not wanted anything from you. If I'd have thought you felt this way about it, I, I'd have told you in the beginning. How do you expect me to feel? You think I enjoy being played for a sucker? I don't know what to think. Maybe you just better take me home. Waiter. Hello, Scotty. Mitch, what are you doing here? I just dropped around to find out how things were going. The boss wants to see you back in Chicago, Scotty. Huh? Yeah, he figured it's about time to look over some of the accounts. A couple of things he don't understand what's been going on here. What are you talking about? I sent him a full report on what I've been doing here. Didn't he get it? He didn't want to see the report, Scotty. He wants to see you. Now, look, somebody's waiting for me outside. I, I just want to take a home. Forget it, will you? She can go by herself. You're coming with me. All I want to do is take a home. Cut it out. This is no time to be a gentleman. Now, sir, I don't understand their sudden change in plans, but it's definite they're leaving for Chicago in the morning. Barrow, his wife, and this man, Mitch Sanders, who just arrived here this afternoon. Well, in that case, I think you'd better leave on the same plane, unless you need more time to establish evidence. I don't believe I do, Chief. Most of my information is in pretty good shape. We may want to pick up some more depositions later on, but right now, I think I have enough to recommend an indictment. All right, Jennings. 
We'll have to spend some time together on the reports I've been getting from Hollingsworth and Stevens, but if you feel that you can't accomplish anything more by staying over there, come on home. I don't get it, fellas, honest. Well, I wouldn't try to double-cross you and the boys. I've been doing business with you too long for that. Well, haven't I? Who said I was selling you out? If I'd wanted to pull anything like that, I would have done it long ago on that oil deal. Well, don't you believe me? Sit down. Now, look, Mr. Houston, you're making a big mistake. You shouldn't have sent Mitch over there to bring me back. I was about ready to put us into a big picture deal. That's why you transferred all this dough into your own account? Well, I had to have the cash to put me in a good position. If I'd closed that picture deal, I would have needed $300,000 to put up right away. Yeah, what about your letter of credit? You had enough to cover yourself with that if you needed the dough for a big deal. Yeah, how about that, Scotty? How about that real estate guy from Marseille? Mitch tells me you were going to buy a house from him in the southern part of France. Well, you a house for who? Well, I... come on, come on, level with me, Barrow. You better level with me. This ain't peanuts we're talking about, it's real dough. I know it's a lot of dough. That's why I'm trying to tell you what happened. I was just getting the cash ready to put us into a new deal. Yeah, that's what I was doing, getting the cash ready. Yeah, cash for who? That opera singer you were so nuts about? <laughs> that's why you sold half our holdings? So you'd have enough cash to run away from her? Now, don't be crazy. She doesn't mean anything to me. Stupid little moron. She's nothing but a yokel. Why her father raises goats? So, huh? Tell me about it. You were nuts about her. Your wife told us all about it. Yeah, but look. Shut up. You were with that dame when I found you in the cafe. All right, I was with her. And for a while, I was crazy about her, too. I wanted to run away with her. Build a house in southern France. But not with your dough. I was going to use my own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to use your own and leave ours. <laughs> Take him downstairs. Mitch. No, wait. I'm Take not... him downstairs, I said, in the car. Now, wait a minute. You fellas got the wrong idea. My wife just told you that story to get even with me. I wasn't crossing you. Come on. No, I wasn't honest. Well, you don't think I'd pull anything on the boys? My motor was just... You keep your mouth shut. Mr. Houston? Uh, who are you? Special Agent Jennings, Internal Revenue Service. I'm busy right now. See me later. Well, this is quite important, Mr. Houston. There may not be another... I said I'm busy now. See me in the morning. Don't let him send you away. You'll kill me. Don't you think you'd better let me know what this is all about, Mr. Houston? Yeah, I guess you're right. Come in, Mr. Jennings. Mr. Barrow is just late. I'd like to speak to Mr. Barrow, too. I'll talk. I'll talk. I'll tell you anything you want to know. Or to get me out of here. Just get me out of here. Why, certainly, Mr. Barrow. This way, please. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. You're a perfect gentleman. Scotty Barrow was delighted to place himself in the custody of Special Agent Jennings. The evidence which Jennings had gathered against him served to convict him of income tax evasion and conspiracy to defraud the government. At Barrow's trial, it was proved that he had failed to pay some $70,000 in taxes rightfully belonging to the government. Barrow was convicted, sentenced to two and a half years in a federal penitentiary, and almost all of the money due was recovered. As for Houston, who had hired Barrow as a financial consultant for a syndicate of former gangsters who attempting to hide their undeclared wealth in apparently legitimate ventures, he was indicted for income tax evasion and is now awaiting prosecution.